Oh, good morning, ladies. So, it is very early in the morning, and this is going to be a vlogger style video because this morning is finally the day of my hysteroscopy procedure. So, it's supposed to be at 7 30. We have to be to the hospital by 6 30. And so we're leaving here at 6 o'clock, and we're probably going to get there around like 6.20, pretty early, probably 6.15, 6.20-ish, because it's not too far from our house. Um, but in terms of my feelings, I'm doing pretty good. I will say that my throat is excessively dry, and so I'm not too thrilled about that, because as I was saying in the previous video, I'm the type of person that like drinks water in the middle of the night, and I drink it right before I go to bed, so that whole don't drink anything past midnight is kind of like really kicking in so i'm ready for this thing to be over and done with uh i do have my medicine which i'm going to pack with me handy dandy uh i was told to use cytotec or the generic brand is like misoprostol and that's to help like soften up your cervix and things like that and so i am going to do that in a few right before I actually leave and so these two pills is actually two of them are supposed to be inserted vaginally because it's supposed to help you know soften your cervix and stuff like that um, it's used in other things like it's used to help with labor it's used to help with miscarriage it's used to do a few things so I'll be sure to leave a link below so you can read all the things that Cytotech actually does um, but yeah so they want you to take it Pretty much right before you're going to leave your house, the doctor did tell me that once the procedure starts, they're going to wash that away and stuff like that. Because I definitely was a little concerned because I know how side of tech works. And I was like, I do not want to feel like I am in any type of labor, you know, with the dilation of my cervix. And <laughs> so this should be good. But anyway, we're going to bring you along uh, while I am getting the procedure done. My husband will be there. I will leave him with the camera. If he actually vlogs something, you should consider that a treat. Uh, but I'm not gonna make any promises. So we'll see how this goes. So and so this is what they look like. They are very small, but very powerful. <laughs> this hot pad here to rise the veins to put the IV in so it'll be quite interesting because this is my vlogging hand <laughs> we had all the you know pre-op kind of conversation and so that was good I do still feel a little bit stuffy I was able to have water so I am very happy about that because you know this morning I was saying I was all you know throat, throat crunched and everything so I took two Tylenols and water they wanted me to do that because of the anesthesia and so so far so good and I'm in the little it looks like a little cubicle and say hey hello <laughs> and now I'm waiting for my IV. And I got this fabulous calf on. And this fabulous little Same pills. thing here. Mm -hmm. And it was nice. Like when I first walked in funny. downstairs, the nurse was already waiting. Really she was ready to bring me up here. So far, a wonderful experience. And I'm happy about getting the IV in my hand versus my arm. So, great. So, my IV is in. And I have some liquid up here. She did tell me the name of it. I'm waiting for it to just dose through and so I'm pretty much just sitting here <laughs> relaxing until time with a little hot thing um, it was burning initially but it's it's normal now so that's good Not really all that excited about the procedure, but I, I, I do I do know it's gonna be like good for us to find out if everything is good. 
Street. And um, I know we had a lot of ans uh, questions, so it's hopefully everything goes uh, according to plan. And I know I know everything will be fine. So now it's the waiting game, but I'm pretty good at waiting. I brought my tablet. I got uh, and my music and, uh, and some headphones. So definitely gonna have some good time uh, waiting. It's further away from you than. Did you press the record button? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm awake. I just arrived. Where is it? And so we are all done. This is purple. It's actually really nice. You know, my favorite color is purple. The camera is not doing it any justice, but on my way back. Good portion of the ride here. Um, I woke up in a hospital with, after all the anesthesia and everything, but I'm still very tired. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to take probably a very long extended nap. And when I'm done with the nap, then I'll come back and let you know like my full entire experience. And um, I'll show you the pictures that were taken after, let you know if they found anything or anything like that. But for now, it is nap time. Hello, ladies. So I am back in full effect. I don't feel any woozy or drowsy or tired or sleepy. Several hours have passed. I want to say probably about 12 hours since my very last clip. So now I can give you the whole entire one through on everything that happened, everything that ex that I experienced from start to finish. Um, even though I did vlog a full portion, a good portion of it. I'll also give you the results uh, from the actual procedure and show you the pictures because there are pictures. So for those of you who don't know, this particular procedure was three different things. It was a hysteroscopy, a polypectomy, and a dilation and cooterage or cutterage, which is also known as a DNC. I think I explained before we were using the D part of the DNC and not actually the C. So the dilation, but not the scraping or cutterage part of any of that. Um, but let's start from the beginning. So I got up this morning. We had to be there by 6.30. I was told to make sure to put my two pills, a Cytotec or the generic version, which is misoprostol, in the vagina, two tablets before you go because it helps to soften the cervix and things like that. I explained earlier in the video what you use that for. It could definitely cause you to start having cramping and things like that. So I knew that I was going to put it in right before I left because I don't want any extra, <laughs> any extra type of crazy feelings. So we left. I got down to the hospital. As soon as I got to the door, the front door of the hospital, the nurse was already there waiting for me, which is really nice and welcoming. Um, she was just like, you're here for your surgery. I'm going to help you out. You're going to be with me for the day. And went in the elevator. She kind of explained to me what was going to be happening and things like that. So when I got there, I was the first procedure of the day. And so I had the very first room. We went in, we got my um, like little robe and clothes and things like that. We went into the bathroom for me to change and to be completely undressed. Uh, two questions that she did ask. One was if I had intercourse since my pre-op appointment. 
and two if there was a possibility that I could be pregnant because that's like a showstopper when it comes to this type of procedure you guys already know obviously there was no possibility of me being pregnant because I've been on birth control since a little before this procedure and so just about three weeks ago I started the birth control for before the procedure and I can actually show you so for those of you who saw it when I first got this pack this is where I'm at with it now. Um, and so I've been religiously taking the birth control every day. So after that, I got all dressed up. By the time I came back, my husband was already there. Uh, she came back, rolled me to the well, walked me to the room. And uh, Michelle explained my IV was going to be in my hand. And I don't ever remember having an IV in my hand. I feel like I've always had them in my arm. So that was different. Gave me a big blue bag of this like jelly-like warm substance. And I just put it on my hand because it was supposed to help like bring up the veins. So she came back in, she found a vein, poked it, and IV was in. Nothing too crazy. She was like, you get my um my IV patient of the week. Favorite IV patient of the week. She's like, is this week people were acting totally crazy, yelling, screaming, thrashing, thinking I was killing them. And I was like, okay. I said, like, well, I've had my fair share of needles. That's one thing that I will say that I'm not a fan of. Like, from the beginning of this whole TTC journey, I'm not a fan of needles. Um, but after starting it, although I'm not a fan, I can definitely tolerate them. And so from the beginning of my TTC journey up until now, I've had my fair share of needles. So before I was a little bit more squeamish and squirmish, I'm much better at that. So kudos to me. So after that... Um, they put the IV in, we had a bag on, and that dripped for, I want to say, maybe 45 minutes while they were waiting to get everything set up. The anesthesiologist came in, asked me if I had any food allergies, any medicine allergies, if I ever been on anesthesia, how I was feeling. You know, I also had a cold, so I explained I had a cold, but that really wasn't a big deal. Uh, they did give me water of which I was super excited about because I just could not deal with the not having water. So I did get water and Tylenol before that. Uh, but he came in and he spoke to me about everything, what was going to be done, um, what type of anesthesia I would be under and where we're gonna go from there. So now the anesthesia doctor, I will say looked very creepy creeping to Okay, and I feel like that's how most anesthesia doctors look like on movies and things like that. He was very creepy, creeping tin, but he was a very nice man. Uh, so he came in right before my procedure, and before they get ready to roll me away, and this time my husband, okay, you know, wait in the waiting room, and when she comes out, you know, we'll let you know it's only about a 30 minute procedure, things like that. So you guys know the whole point of this, just in case you don't know was to go in and I'll explain to you what my doctor said happens at that because she told in the pre-op appointment. They wash you up, they go in from a GYN perspective, which is like if you were going to get your um, GYN exam, and they put a camera in there, they look around to see how the lay of the land is pretty much on the inside. And then if they see any polyps, they remove them. Um, if they see anything that causes you to need a full scraping, then they would do that at the time. So this is where I was, okay? I just wanna just tell you where I was. This was room number one. And this was the entrance to the operating room, okay? Room number one, entrance to the operating room. Before we're getting ready to roll off, the anesthesiologist says, well, you know, I'm gonna put a little something in your, um, in your IV, right? Because he had already put like a little anesthesia stuff in my IV the first time. And when he put it in, it burned. And I was like, whoo, wait a second. But right before that, before we get ready to roll up, he says, I'm gonna put a little something in your um, your IV to take away the edge and stuff like that. Just a little bit of volume, right? A little bit of volume, okay. I've never had volume before, but give me a little bit of volume, sure enough. This is the door. This is, this is room one. This is the entrance of the office or the what is this the the operating room by the time i got from right here to right here which was like no time they opened up the emergency room door and all i could do was laugh I was laughing hysterically. I thought everything was funny. We go into the emergency room they have the not the emergency room the operating room they had these big lights 
at the time I was laughing at the lights, I was laughing at the people. I was like, I remember asking, I'm like, do, do most people come in here and start laughing? Like, this is funny. It was hilarious. They were telling me, she was saying, she was telling me that I needed to get on the other little bed, so I needed to lift my butt up. But apparently lift my butt up sound like lift my legs. So every time they would tell me lift my butt, I would lift my legs, lift my butt, and I would lift my legs. And it was just, it was a hilarious little thing. Um, and that was pretty much all that I remember. I remember laughing, and I remember them would tell me lift my butt, and I would lift my legs, and I don't know what they did. I, I don't know if I ended up lifting my legs for them. I don't know what exactly happened. But all I knew is in the less than one minute that he put that volume into the time that I got in front of that operating door, everything was hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. You didn't have to say anything and I was totally cracking up about everything. Uh, so I came out of the procedure room, woke up. My husband was there, of course. Uh, the doctor had went and actually spoke to him and gave him all the information, um, told him if they found anything, gave him the pictures. So he came back and he told me all the information. And so for those of you wondering, I, they did find a polyp. They found a polyp on my left side. I will show you a picture of it. And that polyp was removed. It was removed and then they're also sending it to pathology. So the next time I go to my doctor's appointment, they're just gonna let me know like what they found from that particular polyp. But they did find a polyp on my left side. And so I was happy that we went through with this procedure so that we can just get everything going, make sure the lay of the land is nice and clear for everything that we need to move forward with. Um, but overall, in terms of recovery, I slept pretty much the entire time on the ride back. I was still very drowsy from the anesthesia, even though I stayed an hour after. Um, by the time I got home, I slept about three hours as well. And then later on in the day, I slept about another two and a half hours. So a lot of napping today. This is late at night, this is probably about 10. And now I feel all up and motivated and rejuvenated. Uh, in terms of like the after effects, if I felt any soreness or anything like that, no. I don't feel any soreness, I don't feel, um, Anything in terms they were asking, you, they were saying you could have like some type of spotting. I haven't had any type of real spotting. I haven't had any cramping. I did take an ibuprofen because you know I had those 600 ibuprofens. And my doctor was saying that whether I feel bad or not, that when I have my lunch to make sure I take the ibuprofen. So I did follow her instructions and I did that even though I wasn't feeling any type of way. So in terms of the hysteroscopy, it was absolutely good and wonderful. It can be done without you being put under anesthesia. You can just be up and watch them, you know, like doing and stuff like that. Um, but I just chose not to. So I guess everyone's um, everyone's perspective of it will be pretty different depending on what you decided to do. Uh, but for the most part, I had an absolutely wonderful experience. I loved all the nurses that I encountered. They were just as sweet as pie. And I look forward to seeing them again in the future. Uh, so let me show you the pictures from what we actually got, which is the look on the inside to show you where the polyp was, what it looked like, and them removing it. All right, so here, is the full picture. So she drew a picture, basically basically this being, you know, obviously leading up into the vagina. And then you can look around here, ovaries, right ovary, left ovary. And she drew in a picture of where the polyp was located that they needed to remove. Um, outside of this polyp, she said that everything looked absolutely wonderful. It was in great condition. And so, that's just showing that it was clear there. This was close to the right side and then this is the left side. So this thing right here, that little big blob, that was the polyp that they ended up removing. For any of you who wanted to know what the polyp looked like, that's what they ended up removing and that's where it was, you know, in terms of placement on the inside and so i got all these pictures directly after the procedure and again they're going to send this to pathology just to you know find out what they can about it and so i just wanted to mention this here just in case you're like well what in the world polyp like how does this work and things like that so they usually look to see if you have polyps and the polyps are little areas um, in your uterus that grow in a way that they shouldn't be. Uh, and the reason why they check for them and they end up removing them is because depending on 
where your embryo decides to place itself determines what the outcome of your pregnancy could be as well. So if you have an embryo that's trying to place itself where your polyp is, then you're going to have a pretty big problem because there's not going to be an area in, for which it to place itself. Or if it does attach, it may not stay attached because the skin there or the, um, well, we'll just say the inside there just isn't as flat or as good as it's supposed to be. So that's why they try to remove them. Um, there are cases where people have more than one or lots of polyps. And in that case, that's when they have to do a, a full scraping, um, which is the DNC. So DNCs you can have if you have a miscarriage, um, along with other things. And so the whole scraping process is something that I feel like you only want to do if you have to. So when talking to my doctor prior to the procedure, we had already decided that that wasn't something that we wanted to do unless it was like absolutely necessary. And they saw like a million little things happening in there. Uh, but yeah, so just in case you're curious on how polyps will affect your fertility, if you have polyps on the inside, it'll make it harder for a baby to implant. Now, babies don't always try to implant in the same place, so it really just depends on where they try to implant at that time. Um, but if they are trying to implant in that particular place where you would have the polyp, it would give you much issue. And so that's why they prefer it to remove. And so other than that, everything was pretty good. They did have me do like a whole list of post-op instruction so here's a couple of things uh start eating back slowly no strenuous activities for 24 hours uh no cooking cleaning or driving they don't want you to do any shower for 24 hours they don't want you to do any like sit down soak in a tub bath for 20, 24 hours um no tampons they want you to call if for some reason you have any type of excessive bleeding because they're really not expecting you to have bleeding at all. So if you have any type of excessive bleeding, they had a number to call and then they scheduled um, my appointment, my post-op appointment, which I already had and just moved it over a little bit. And so far, so good. So in terms of my personal experience, it was good. I don't have anything that I could say that was bad about it. I didn't experience any type of pain from the medicine or from the procedure, everything was a-okay. So I'm very happy that I did it and we got it done. And um, yeah, we did it. And so now it's like on to the next thing. There's a lot of other things coming up, a lot of things that require waiting. This is the, the point in this particular journey where it requires lots of waiting. So the next step is waiting some more, but of course I will take all of you along. If you are going to have a hysteroscopy or have had one and you want to list your experience down below, you can most certainly put it in the comments so everybody can see. If you have any specific questions for me in regards to it, you can also list it below uh, and I'll be sure to get back to you and answer all, all right, that. ladies, so I hope that you enjoyed this vlog and I will see you next Monday.